Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. What's your why? And by why, I'm not talking about the second from last alphabetical letter. I'm talking about why. W-H-Y. Why? Your reason for being, your claim to fame. Why, why, why? Now, if you've started or listened to anyone talk about entrepreneurship or business, you must have likely come to some point to be told you need to identify your why. People like Simon Sinek have written books, start with why, what's your why? They will tell you. Get clear on your why. Why, 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 why do you want to accomplish what you're seeking to accomplish? Why do you want to make a certain amount of money? Why do you want to be a certain niche? Or on and on and on. Why? Why do they put us through all of that? Now, over the years, I've spent countless hours and writing, podcasting on videos, Facebook lives, in person, meditation, in conversations, just talking about identifying the specifics of what I think my why is, you know, from coaches, from mentors, everybody's just talking about my why, why, why. And make no mistake, I fully agree with the importance of being clear on all the reasons why, because the bottom line is if you don't know why, then what the heck is the point? And after years of dissecting and analyzing my why and hearing it over and over and over from people that I admire, how important it is to identify my why, I had an awakening that opened an entirely untapped purpose for my vision. You see, I started working out while I was, um, you know, during COVID and um, that in and of itself created yet another thing that I did to cut the day, um, you know, in, in, in my humdrum of just waking up and going to my office and not doing anything or seeing anyone. So while I was lifting those heavy things, um, you know, at the gym, something happened to me because my little girl walked in to the garage and I was quick to jump so that she wouldn't hurt her toes with the, um, you know, the metal plates. And then I gave her a dumbbell, which weighed about one kilo. You know, the ones that her mom uses um, in the morning. And it dawned on me that, wait a minute, I gave her something specific to her age, something specific to her body size and built and that became the start of what I now say hey why didn't I just give her the heavy things that I was lifting already because obviously that would have pulled out a muscle or something if she tried to do it by herself and I was surprised that I hadn't seen this before and I decided I needed to reel into the specificity of this very simple act of jumping from what I was doing and giving her a specific weight dumbbell, you know? And initially, you know, I was just thinking, oh, it, it's because I don't want my daughter to get hurt. But I actually had a realization of the fact that along the way to achieving all the things that you dream, you either lose your why or you come to realize that you never identified it in the first place and all along you had was this need you know ideal of success yes i'm in there sitting and doing my normal daily routine but 
to her. She wanted to be part of what I was doing, but she only wanted to come in at her own weight and at her own capacity. So as I was lifting, I realized that all this time I'd been focusing on intricately on the details of my why. I had forgotten an equally and arguably more important piece, the who. I'd spent so much time focusing on detailing my why that somewhere along the line, the who got lost in the source. You can imagine the relevation of disconnect I had when I realized that so much of my why was to make an impact, to add value, to empire, um, empower people, to inspire people. But I hadn't identified who I was inspiring and with what. And with that, the who. There's no impact to make, there's no value to be made, and there's no one to empower or to inspire. I know even if you look at people like Mark Twain, they come up with those, um, you know, realizations that the two most important days in your lives are the days when you're born and the day when you find out why you were born. But let me say something. I think maybe another step towards that is who you need to become for whom. And once you figure that out, let me tell you something, man. You know, you 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 now know what to write stuff for, who to speak to, and like right now, I sincerely know the person that I'm speaking to right now in terms of this uh, podcast. You know. Because I understand what you're going through, I understand what it is that might be, um, you know, you know, gravitating yourself towards uh, wanting to learn more from me. Yeah, let me find out if I actually know who's listening to this podcast right now. Don't you spend days working by yourself on a computer? Maybe not exactly in a dark room, but just trying to figure out how you can get more money with less struggle. Don't you spend the last moment on your pillow at, at night worried about how you can get more clients? Do you feel the pinch of the rising ad costs or when Facebook or Google changed their algorithm, do you feel like you are at the mercy of them because you haven't um, created your own platform? Or maybe you're afraid that the next lockdown is completely going to wipe you out because with this one that we just came out of, you just barely survived. Or do you worry that you're going to lose a lot of your clients because everything is just going to get shut and nobody's going to be able to reach out to you. Or do you actually just chase potential clients and ask them um, if they have read your proposal yet or if they're seeing any of your um, social media posts? Does this sound like you? Because I think now I've got a good grasp on the right kind of person with the right kind of pain that our products and solutions can actually uh, help you with. So when I saw my little girl come through, I began to think about everything down to my trivial social media posts. There were so many elements of my business that were that I could continuously do for the why of my success, all the while entire, entirely ignoring who it was all for. You know, I, I knew why it was important for me to create content for social media and why it was important to do the tasks that I was inspired to do. And I knew why I was working so hard to create a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And I knew why I needed to create time. I knew why I needed to create freedom because of my little girls. And I knew why I needed to create financial freedom because I want to buy them a plane so that we can fly wherever we want to go. I knew why. And I know why I should be working hard in order for me to connect with you every single time I show up on a podcast. You know, knowing that I should be posting social media content because it will increase my engagement. But the whole time worrying more about the judgment of others or people who knew me rather than who it would help, who would enjoy it, who would relate to it. Who, who, who? We're creating podcasts, we're creating programs, services, and creating businesses that are profitable and enjoyable, but we're ignoring who it would actually empower, inspire, and whose life, career it would actually change. 
so often I heard a lot of business people and entrepreneurs talk about the vital importance of adding value and not just making money. But I could never fully grasp the concept of that of my soul focus. That was my why. Why was I doing what I was doing? You know, and from the profit standpoint, it never made sense, um, you know, to me why I should give away free content, products or services when businesses needed to make a profit. And then I realized that it, it is an unattainable concept if you are not equally focused on the who. The fact of the matter is that having a why is the obviously the blood um, you know, the lifeblood of your business. It is a driving force that keeps you motivated. It keeps you clear and it keeps you focused on the end goal. But the who is even greater. Who are you doing this for? Who needs your information right now? Who is already buying those products and services? And who are you going to be creating more content for? You know? Because the way to earn more money and with less struggle is to serve many people. But how are you going to serve many people if you don't know what they are going through right now? If you cannot encourage their dreams, if you cannot confirm their suspicions, and if you cannot throw rocks at their enemies right now, and if you cannot ally with their fears. The who is even greater. It gives your product, your company, your business purpose. It requires emotional engagement, personal investment. Because if you have identified your target market, you become and you have a clear understanding of who you need to be serving, what pain they're going through right now, and what's the best product would solve their particular problems. Because who your customers are, and what impact you're going to do and who your listeners are or what clients or fans are going to be will determine the media that you're going to reach out to them on. Who your customers are will determine the impact um, of the work that you're going to put out there. Not just why your business needs them, but who? Who are they really? They're not just numbers or hashtag or dollar signs or bars or graph or clicks or clickety or whatever it is. These people are fathers and mothers and kids and daughters using your product to make their job as parents or homeowners or business owners. Even there might, there might be young entrepreneurs who need your coaching to learn from your experience. There might be fans who follow you because they admire your confidence, your self-love, and your content actually helps them push a little harder. Who are these people? Yes, the why is the lifeblood of your business, but the who is literally the heart. And without the heart to pump life into the veins of your business, all you have is a bag of cold, sticky, red stuff. Like the kind of cold, sticky, red stuff that my little girl was going to uh, be if I let her use my, my, my weight plates. All right. So from the social media posts that I was putting out there, yes, I was documenting my journey, but to who? Who was listening to all of this stuff? You know, let me tell you something. Whatever your business model, you always need one very important thing. A steady flow of new clients and customers. And that's really the most important thing for scaling and growing any um, coach, uh, you know, consultants or online business. Because the more clients you get, the more successful your online business is going to be. And without clients, you definitely do not have a business. Now, there are quite a lot of ways for you to build a business online, but most of them involve the hard to get thing. These are the clients. You might be fully aware and clear on why you do what you do. You see, for me, it's super, super easy. I'm the founder of Live Long Digital, where we help businesses explode in growth using digital marketing strategies. And I'm really passionate about helping coaches, consultants, and small business owners grow their business simply because I know what it's like to come from the bottom. 
You know, you see, I was born in Zimbabwe, in Africa, and growing up, life was pretty tough. I did not have a lot of money or hope, and, um, you know, we never thought we were going to amount to anything. But there was no one to even become a role model to inspire me to expand my horizons. So the reason why I'm very in tune with wanting to help people that can change people's lives is because somebody did the same for me. My life changed when a bright-eyed Australian teacher came to work at my school and she taught me that Australia had this incredible opportunity um, that it had to offer. And from then on, I started working my butt off in order for me to be, do, and have this life that I now have. All right? So my why is to make sure that I empower other coaches just in case they too can influence other people out there to be, do, and have a happier existence or so that they don't give up. So for you, you're going to need a steady flow of new clients and customers. And this is the key for you to have a profitable online business. But unfortunately, as we all know, getting more clients is one of the most stressful and anxiety inducing struggles every business owner could actually go through. And the reason why this is because these are the who, the people that are going to be paying you money in order to patronize your business. So instead of you going in there and treating them as fans or hashtags or as numbers in your email list, these are people. And like I mentioned, these are people that are fathers, their mothers, their brothers, their sisters, their daughters, somebody's kid who has a credit card in which you are going to be enjoying your holiday later on based on the money that they have paid you. They are not just a dollar sign, a bar or a graph in your line or on your way to be successful. That is the who. Yes, you know your why. Yes, you know why you're in business. Yes, you know why it matters. Yes, you know why you should continue to do that. Yes, you know why you should inspire people. But who are you doing it for? So the first step to a successful marketing strategy is identifying who your ideal client is. Now, don't make a mistake of marketing to everyone because people do not listen to marketing that is not directed at them. Right? It's one of the most common mistakes that you find with digital marketers or consultants or coaches out there because they're just marketing to everyone. What I call spray and praying with their marketing. All right? They're just exposing their um, products and services to just whoever anyone can listen or whoever um, has, is paying attention to them. And they don't realize that not everyone is your customer. For you to actually have a successful online business, you need to target the right kind of people with the right kind of pain with the right product so they can receive the best payoff. All right? And to make sure you're targeting the right clients for your business, ask yourself this question. Who can benefit from my product and services right now? Who is going through what I have gone through and needs the solution to how I solved that problem myself. Because if you're not talking to the right people, your marketing message may not be as effective. You know, right now, speaking in a totally different language, you stopped being the who of this podcast simply because I wasn't speaking to you. So if you're not talking to the right people, your marketing message will not be effective. And because it will not be directed at the right people, then you're just spraying and praying with whatever it is that you're putting out there. Maybe the people that you're talking to, they don't actually need the solution that you're offering. And perhaps they don't even have the problem that you intend to be serving for them. So what do you do instead? Do you continuously just flog the why horse or do you actually do something different instead? How do you find this perfect, elusive clients for your business? Let me tell you something. In order for you to find this ideal client, you need to create a perfect customer avatar. That's the who of your business. All right? A customer avatar is a, is a method that you then design to help you understand who your ideal client is, who they are, where they live, how old they are, etc. 
And the more you know about this ideal client, the more effective your marketing message is going to be. Because try and research and understand their needs, their desires, their pain points of these ideal clients so that when you speak to them, it resonates. All right? And, you know, when you actually uncover their real pains, their wants, their needs, their desires, before they actually, you know, know uh, what their problem is, then they can assume you've got the solution. Like, this is the basic foundation on any successful marketing strategy. Because, let me tell you something, if you can define and describe your customer's pain a lot better than they can, they assume that you have the solution. And furthermore, a customer's avatar that, that you would have created there would actually help you structure your marketing message and develop your product and your services so that everything is designed to fulfill the needs and the desires of your target clients. And when you fully understand your perfect client, it's very easy for you to actually answer, um, you know, the, 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 the these questions that I'm going to ask you and otherwise you will actually start having a positive return on your marketing spend, the energy that you're spending to reach out to people there instead of just trying to tell people your why. Nobody cares. People only care what it is that you can do for them, not what you can do. All right? So once you know who you're doing this for, it informs the type of ads your ideal client is more receptive to. It informs the language and the vocabulary, which actually appeals to them a lot more. Because some consultants, you know, have this learned approach. And if you are not speaking at the level at which they expect their partners to be speaking at, they don't consider you um, as somebody who can help them solve whatever problems they might have. You might be very good at what you're doing, but if you're speaking to the wrong person, then it's not going to help anyone. You know, and you want to know what areas or what traffic sources you should use to reach them. And you want to know what is their ultimate goal. What is it that they would want to come to you for? So in a nutshell, you definitely need to know who you are talking to. Yes, you might know the why inside out. I could wake you up in the middle of your sleep and everything else. but who are you passing that message on to? You know? Imagine for a moment that you start talking to and doing business with people who really need what your products and services um, are offering and they're ready to buy. Isn't that what we all want? That would be really cool, right? So you need to really um, put out and identify your target audience. You know, you need to find out who exactly is going to need my consulting, who is going to need my training, who will make most use of my training, who will make the most use of the information that I'm putting out there, who needs my expertise at the moment, who would listen when I am paid to speak at their event. Because knowing your dream buyer changes everything. Your product and service, your offering, your marketing strategy, your value proposition, your pricing, your tone, your copy, whatever channels you advertise on and more. Because no one can afford to address everyone's problems. And especially in today's market conditions where we've got media diarrhea or we are bombarded with uh, influence, uh, the reach for our customers has become highly fragmented. And if your business is going to complete with the big guys, you may have to zero in on your dream buyer. You know, we speak to a lot of businesses as a, a digital agency and a lot of business owners, you know, or coaches or consultants, they simply tell us that uh, I'm targeting whoever is interested in my services. You know, and some say that their target is maybe business owners, homeowners, property investors or mothers. Well, even though it's a good start, but these targets are way too general um, to go after. Specificity is key, especially in the online space. The reason why that is now is because back in the time, you know, we used to have one telephone in the household. You know, we used to have one television. 
But if you come into my household today, we've got 16 different screens. I, I keep counting them. Most of them are in my office anyway. <laughs> you know, we've got 16 different screens. So each of our kids is being reached to by adverts that pertain to what they're watching and what their interests are. You know, I can never be, um, you know, enticed to watch a full commercial for Barbie doll, but you see my kids watching stuff. And if anything comes with cars or something that doesn't pertain to my kids, my kids know how to skip ads. So all of that ad spend is being wasted on people that are not actually going to respond to those ads. And can you imagine if you actually know who it is that you're um, dealing with and what time and at what space and who um, is, is, is going to respond much f favorably to your um, communication? Wouldn't you just go after them instead of you trying to explain to them why you do what you do? So if you define your dream buyer, you know, even though it might seem like you're excluding all other audiences, we've become a global village. So don't worry about having three or four people that are going to be buying from you. If those people are going to be purchasing from you, those are your people. And if you look in your business anyway, you probably don't need 500,000 followers. You probably need five people that are buying from you consistently. Have you ever done the math? So you want to keep in mind when you're targeting specific, um, you know, people that you're going for the right kind of person with the right kind of pain with a product that they're going to purchase. You know why? Because you already know what it is that they're looking for. You know? So there's a few questions that you got to ask yourself when you're defining, um, you know, your dream buy. Find out where they hang out and where they congregate because if you're going to be spraying and praying with your marketing, then it's all going to be for naught, you know, you know, and you want to know what, where does your dream buyer get their information? Because when your dream buyer is in research mode, where do they go to find answers? Um, that they seek? Do they go on Google? Do they use a particular blog? Do they read books? Do they read magazines? Or do they go on YouTube? You need to know all of this information. And once you do, you do this, give your avatar a name. All right? So figure out what they are doing and how you can possibly help them at any given moment of their time. And if you know your who then you would know what is frustrating them right now. What is keeping them up at night? I know that you want to generate leads. I know that you want to grow your business. I know that you want freedom and time all at the same uh, time, not either all. And that's the reason why I show up every single day for this podcast in order for me to help you uh, make sense of the world around you, especially the online world. You know? This is not for fun or because I don't have anything else to do. I know my target audience needs me and that's why I show up every single day. So what are the frustrations that your target audience is facing right now and what your solutions can provide? What are their hopes, their dreams and their desires that you can help them achieve or model the behavior that would help them um, achieve those things because once you've identified your target market you need to just clarify your message and determine what media you're going to be reaching out to them on all right so the fact of the matter is like i said earlier on just just having a why of course it's the lifeblood of your business it is a driving force that keeps you motivated it keeps you clear it keeps you focused on the end goal but the who is even greater because the who is what pays you, all right? Your critics don't buy tickets to the show. You need to know who you are uh, doing all of this for, you know? And it actually gives your product, your company, your business, a whole lot of purpose to exist. And it requires a lot of emotional engagement because once you know, um, you know, the, the, the right kind of person with the right kind of pain and the product, it makes it super, super easy for you to reach out to them because you are clear and you understand how your, your work is going to impact them and why you need to show up in their space every single day, you know? 
because who your customers are, what impact you're going to give to them and who your listeners or your clients or your fans or your followers are will determine how you show up each and every single day. It's not just because your business needs them, you know, but who are they really? They're not just numbers or dollars or signs or bars on a graph or clicks that you count and high five with your uh, team to say, yes, we've, uh, down we've got all these downloads. These are fathers, these are mothers, these are brothers, sisters, grandfathers, somebody's son, daughter that are using your products and services to make sense of the world around them, to make their jobs as either parents or homeowners easier so that they don't waste money, so that they also don't have sleepless nights. This could be young entrepreneurs who are in need of your coaching so they could learn from your experience. And their fans will follow you because they actually admire your confidence and your self-love and your content helps them push a little bit harder. Yes, the why is the lifeblood of your business, but the who is quite literally the heart. And without the heart, my friend, you can't pump life into the veins of your business. All you have is a lump of flesh. All right. Do you know who needs your message? I know who needs my message. It is you. Now, I want you to act on it. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the live long digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.